Right, a UK tropical style garden looking at its very worst. So we are mid January. We had the cold patch about a month ago and uh, it's been mild since and now the weather is uh, changing again so we're going to get another cold patch over the next four or five days possible frosts which is I don't think is going to be anywhere near as bad as what we had before but obviously we've got weakened plants from the initial cold patch we had and uh, interestingly the, the gunner which I which everyone really does just cut the leaves off and stick over the top of the crowns of the plant they've really sort of collapsed down and normally they stay pretty rigid over the winter up until spring but um, yeah so they've collapsed down a bit but they're, they're still going to provide enough protection for that so um, so looking at you know for a short term sort of proactive protection I didn't really fleece the tree ferns in the last cold patch but again due to maybe being a bit weak or any slight damage that may have occurred I'm I have fleeced inside and we can see from that last cold patch that the, the top fronds that took the, the brunt of the, the frosts just clearly browned off but due to the original fronds protecting the these underlayer fronds they're, they're still pretty green so yeah just a bit of fleece in the top of there again that'll just be for the duration of the three or four days cold patch we, we're gonna get and then I'll pop that straight out again. Um, so, too little, too late when it comes to the centre bed. I wanted to test how hardy stuff is. And uh, I didn't actually protect anything in the centre bed here. And most of the palms were absolutely fine. But I pushed the Brahea Amata too hard. Pushed it a bit too far, knowing that's sort of a want to be on more of the dry side and I left it open and we had spear pull on that I did do a, a video on it but what I've done here is if there is any chance of it regrowing I did put hydrogen peroxide down the centre and basically I've just put some posts in the ground and some clear flexi plastic just to stop the wind and I put a loop of plastic inside to stop the wet getting in the crown so Rather, rather than cover the whole thing and risk it, you know, sort of lack of airflow, sort of rotten away even more. I just figured that this is going to stop the worst of the, the wind and rain and frosts gathering in, in the crown of it. And it still allows plenty of airflow, so I've left a three inch gap at the bottom of that. So any sort of rain it does come down it's going to be blocked and then we've got that hoop inside so that's going to keep that scent of that Brahea edgeless dry um, another plant that's probably too little too late so I've got a little uh, cycad there the sago palm so that flushed out in the last summer and since then that cold patch we had a lot of the the leaves brown off still plenty of green in the stems but the sort of leaflets themselves have uh, browned a bit but rather than make the situation any worse i should have done it first time round but we all learn from our mistakes so this time i've this is just like a uh, a fleece bag it's quite a long one so i've cut it into several sections so it's open both ends and I've literally just tucked the, the fronds of the Sago palm in, so it's sort of holding it in place. 
so it's not going to blow away. I mean, if you were concerned, then you could obviously just stake the fleece bag with uh, tent pegs or whatever, but I think it's pretty solid on here because the, the fronds are holding it in position. And then I'm just going to tuck that inside. Uh, it has been windy the last couple of days, but I think with the, the colder air coming down, it's normally different directions, so it's not going to get affected too much from the wind. So that's going to help that in a already weakened state. That's just going to give it a little bit of protection just to help that through. Um, yeah, so other than that, I mean, I've, I've uh, just moved a couple of pots I had in the open while it's mild and just put them in, uh, you know, under shelters or whatever. Just to stop any, any of the worst of the frost getting to them. And I did have, uh, I have to excuse all the rubbish about, I've been moving stuff about a bit, but moved some of the smaller pot of palms, which I did have out. Um, in a sheltered area, I thought, well, I'm not going to risk it. So I've moved them into the, the summer house. Um, so mainly just the... the sables. So we've got some... Uh, dwarf sable palmetto. And some riverside, so I didn't really want to get them damaged, so... I'll put them in there so that's just a temporary measure that'll be just for the few days and uh, they'll come out again that is worth noting that again this my biggest tree fern here which is I don't know five foot or so trunk um, I have fleeced the center of this one I didn't bother over the last cold period due to the the overhead canopy and we can see that with that overhead canopy compared to the other tree fern that the, the fronds just burnt up and turned brown this has still got a lot of green in it so just that bit of overhead canopy definitely protected that but you know why risk it for the sake of just stuffing a bit of fleece in the top there over that few days of possible frosts and Let's just do it. I mean, I've, I've not been one really, and I, sh I should should really be a bit more proactive when it comes to protecting plants. So in general, I, you know, I put up a, a shelter over a certain plant or whatever, and that's it. I don't like to sort of run in and out and change things about too much, but if it's going to save a plant, then it's worth doing. Yeah. So you've literally just got a plastic bag over the chef layer. And uh, that's doing pretty well. Got a couple of yellowing leaves, but in general, that uh, went through the last cold patch, no problem. So hopefully it'll uh, do the same. I've got a very small tree fern here, which has browned off quite, quite badly, but that'll flush out in spring. Yeah, so in general, just, uh, you know, I don't know exactly the temperatures we're looking at, but I mean, I did see a local forecast and we could get down to minus four again on one or two nights. And that thing is, I am a bit more, um, slightly more milder than a lot of places in my area, just because I am sort of so close to the coast, but... I'm not going to risk it after the last time. We we weren't supposed to get more than minus two, and we did get minus four, maybe even a little lower than that. But so it's not worth risking for the sake of a, a couple of days cold. We're, we're gonna we're gonna try and prevent any more damage from happening. Again, a lot of the stuff I'm not really worried about. You know, the fact is, in that they'll they'll grow back. Any sort of minor damage on the leaves on them. So we'll leave it there, like I say, just, uh, just a word of warning, don't, don't uh, make the same mistakes as me and, you know, 
we all know what we should be doing but sometimes you think oh that's not going to happen to me it's not going to be that cold here well you really don't ever know so you can't always go by your, your forecasts or whatnot so let's just uh air on the side of caution right leave it there thanks for watching